Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Real Talk with Lisa. Today I have a special guest, and uh, you know, none other than our retired chief of police of Glendale, Carl Pavelitis. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Lisa. It's nice to be here. <laughs> right? <laughs> With all these lights? <laughs> With all these lights. <laughs> well, I'm going to be talking just a little bit with you, about you, uh, about your history, about your passion, about the things you love, and then, of course, the thing that we all love, the reason we are here together, is right. the yellow duckies, right? So... It is duck season. It is duck season. Is it really duck season? No, but it's duck season. <laughs> it's duck season in Glendale. Right. That's one thing I didn't even check to see when is the real duck season. I think that's in the fall, but I don't really remember. It's been a long time. Okay. But it's duck season in Glendale for our yellow ducks. And that's next month. That's that's next May month. May 4th. So, so the adoptions are open, so it's like it's duck season. <laughs> it is duck season. It's going to be a fun... Um, not only a fun event, but today is going to be fun because we're going to do real talk. We're going to do uh, humor. And this is why I love this gentleman. He can be serious when he needs to be serious, but who he is is just human with all heart. That's what I know you as. So thank you for saying yes to this interview, of first course. and foremost. My pleasure. Um, you served with the Glendale Police Department for approximately 32 years, correct? I did. Yeah. So it's a wonderful community. As I said, I'll, I'll add and maybe get ahead of your questions, but uh, because I didn't grow up in Glendale, but Glendale has become home. Uh, mm -hmm. And I came here in 1990 when I was hired by the Glendale Police Department. And shortly after that, I, I moved to Glendale. And so Glendale's really, really become home. So I've had the pleasure of both working uh, and really serving the community of Glendale uh, and living here for the last 30 years almost 33 years now, but 30 to 32 years with the police department. Wonderful. I know, I've known you since you were in the black and white. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you were this. I was thinner. You were just extreme. <laughs> and black hair? And, no. I, and, I, and I had a full head of hair. <laughs> Things changed over 37 years. <laughs> we changed. We evolved. Yes. We I like evolve. <laughs> yes, we evolved. Uh, one of the things is, how, how has our community changed? You know, Glendale, Other than the restaurants. <laughs> well, there's some good food here. It's like, I, 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 can, I, can, I can testify to that. Uh, number of lunch meetings. But, you know, Glendale is a, a unique community. Um, it, is a, it is a very, very, very special community that I've gotten to know in a, in a number of ways. Obviously, one is working in the police department. Uh, and being very actively involved in community policing throughout my career, I've gotten to know various facets of the community and the richness of the cultures mm. that are that are here in Glendale. And it's like, you know, you can find any kind of food, which is almost like you could find any kind of people in, in Glendale. Uh, but I think, you know, what I also see in Glendale is a willingness of people to come together to make this community better. And I don't mean that just from, from a, a standpoint of public safety and a police department. I mean that in terms of the various organizations in this community that help. It's like, you know, I've always had a passion for giving young people a good start in life. I'm a big believer in scholarships. It's like, you know, I've met various people throughout the years and um, one of my friends had two daughters, I won't, won't say his name, and he's older, significantly older, um, but he insisted that both his daughters get an education because yeah. he's old enough to come from the time where it's like, uh, for the most part, women may not have been in professional careers, right. but he did not want his daughters dependent upon a husband for their well-being and their and their success. And I just kind of look at that in terms of human beings. It's important to give kids a good start. It's like you know, an education is something nobody can take away from you. They can take away your property and you know that kind of stuff. But what's up in your head, they can't do that. And right. you know, whatever befalls you, it's like if you have an education, you have the tools to rebuild retool, make the world better. And this community really comes together to make things better. And there's a, a, you know, there's a plethora of organizations, you know, we're here to talk about Kiwanis a little bit, but you know, whether that's the Armenian Relief Society, 
or you know the various scholarship foundations or the community foundation of the Verdugos, and I know I'll leave all sorts of people out because you know you know our, our, our friends over yeah, our friends over in Rotary and you know <laughs> professional professional groups. I mean, there's just a lot of people who really focus on the well-being of this community, uh, and it's not just looking for somebody else to do that. There's people who roll up their sleeves and make it better. That's I think what's really unique about Glendale. Exactly. Well, we do have a lot of organizations that give back to the community and there are organizations that we know of that are doing things for children and making lives better. So I know because I've been in this uh, community, Glendale, since 1976. You have me beat by a few years. <laughs> and uh, from the time that I was in high school, our city has evolved and we do support our uh, police and fire department and because they too are the, the best we have the best first responders I believe and that's because of what the community does for the police department and what they in turn do for us which brings us to now that you have retired <laughs> you have more time to do more civil work and community work, which you are now more involved with the Glendale Kiwanis. Would you like to share a little bit to our community who don't know what Kiwanis stands for, even though I've been there for 30 years um, as a member, for you to explain, because you're our incoming president. <laughs> yeah, so, somehow, when you say retirement, I have more time for other things. Somehow that time gets occupied. But there's always been a commitment to trying to make, you know, my personal goal is to try to leave this world a little bit better than I found it, whether that's in terms of public safety. And I will agree that, you know, the men and women of uh, Glendale's public safety services, police and fire, are the best in the country. And we're very, very fortunate. But that's also uh, part of a relationship between the community and its first responders, because if there's not a relationship between the two, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It can work, but it will not work well. And that relationship and engagement is what makes this, what sets this place apart from other people. It's not only having really good people in the organization, it's having good people in the community and the ability for people to, to, to work together towards, right. uh, towards that. Um, and I'm a big believer in having people involved in their community because you can't really understand a community unless you kind of get out and get to know people. And you know, if you're not willing to roll up your sleeves and, and do some work, that makes it really hard. And it's like, you know, if you're always expecting somebody else to do something, then it's never going to get done. Sometimes you got to go, okay, we can make a difference here as opposed to looking around going, who can fix this problem? Well, maybe it's us. And Kiwanis is one of those service organizations in Glendale that helps make the community better and it focuses on kids. And, you know, somebody that I knew from a professional life used to say, you know, up to the age of three, you learn to read. And from three on, you read to learn. So oh. literacy is really important. So it's like, you know, I guess I'm the typical guy. Usually usually when I'm putting something together, I don't read the instructions until I have leftover parts. But if you're doing it right, if you don't, you know, if someone hands you something like a puzzle and hands you instructions, if you know how to read, you can then... Put the puzzle together but or put the thing together. Like the cubic thing, you don't need instructions. It's all. Some people can do that. Read. Yeah. Some people can do it very innately. Other people do that. But the ability to read gives us the gives us the ability as human beings to learn something we don't know. You know, if you don't know how to fix your car these days, I guess you go to YouTube um, and and watch that. But you know, you can get a manual out or something and read. Going, okay, this is what I need to do that, and that's a capacity that you know we we have. Right. And giving people that is something, as I say, you can't take it away from them. And so when you look at young men and women, kids in our community, they're our future. And so, you know, we want them to be better than we are. We want them to have a better place, have more opportunities. In order to do that, we got to get them off to the right start. And so Kiwanis looks at doing some things. I mean, we've been involved in reading as fundamental literacy programs. Um, we, we've developed service leadership programs in our, in our you know, elementary, middle, and, and high schools and community colleges. Uh, you know, to try to get other people to come join like us. the K-Kids, the, the K-Kids, the Builders Club. Clubs, the like, Circle K Clubs. Exactly. Um, you know, for those that may be developmentally uh, disabled, the Action Clubs, so that everybody can contribute in, in some way. 
and Kiwanis, it's like we have people who contribute in some way. I think some of my favorite projects over the years are the community gardens over on uh, Monterey. Right. Because they're still there. And it's like, you know, that was... And it's growing. And, and it's blossoming. growing and different people come and go. And it's like, you know, but, you know, if you don't have a big enough yard or you live in an apartment and you cannot grow any fresh vegetables you like to, that's now an opportunity. And it's still there and it's still being used. Most people don't know the things and, we do. And it, and it took a couple of days for us to do. I mean... Right. Some very generous people in the in the community donated the lumber, you know, Kiwanis and some of those those kids groups that we just talked about donated the labor. Oh, and in the, they, you they know, help, and, and over and, yeah, and over a weekend we put that together for other people to enjoy. And I think you know, if you're looking for the essence of Kiwanis, it's people who are investing of sometimes their money, sometimes their their labor, a lot of times their time and energy yes. to invest in our younger generation to do that. And I said. Some of the things we also do benefit, uh, you know, benefit adults as well because we're also looking at families, uh, you know, getting people off to that to that good start, uh, you know, if if you know we're big supporters of Essentia, you know, if, if you have a family and you know somebody's lost their job and they don't have a place to go and they don't have food, it's like trying to get all those pieces back in place and get them services and get them started. You know, Kiwanis is one of the groups that that's there. You know, and we do we raise funds we and do. we give to those organizations. We give not only scholarships, but we also give back to some of these big organizations. I know we helped the Red Cross at one point, Salvation Army, and uh, Essentia, sure. even the YMCA, YWCA. Yeah. So any time that they have come and applied for a scholarship. Uh, Kiwanis has also been very open yeah. in giving back to the community. And that's what I said. It's really, it's, it's, there, there's, there's multiple pieces to Kiwanis, mm -hmm. some of which is financial support, and that's important to these organizations. Right. We are one of the organizations that will support other organizations that do good work in the community. And then there's also the part of us that, you, you know, will do the, if you will, the physical labor. Or, you, you know, if you don't think of it as physical labor, that will go in and work with young young people to help them develop uh, and expand their horizons uh, and also teach that, you know, it's not all about what you can take from something because if you need something, we want to make sure it's there, but it's also important to give back. And when you say, when I talk about retirement, right. um, you know, I consider myself very fortunate. You know, the police department was very good. The city of Glendale has, was, was very good to me. And I got to tell you, I really enjoyed my career, but I also am a big believer in giving back, not only while working there, but as I said, my goal in retirement is to continue to be able to work with. So you didn't go in anywhere else. You no, stayed, stayed right I just, here. I stayed right here. This is <laughs> this is this is this has become this has really become home oh. for 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 me. And as I said, where else can you do that? And it's like you know, as I said, as I look at some of the time that I have and some of the things that I think are important, at least from a personal level, um, this allows me to give back and try to help continue to build our community. And as I said, you know, the nice thing about being part of a group like Kiwanis is. I'm with a bunch of like-minded people who also believe, who give of their time. In fact, they, a lot of them give a lot more of their time and energy than I have over the time. I now have a little bit more to give. But it's like, I think that's one of the coolest things about the organization is, is people will do that. But there's a, a third piece of this where in order to do this, as you said, we financially support that. Some of that comes from the generosity of, of the membership, but, other, but we also do the fundraising in order to make this all work. Exactly. And, and, that, get and, the and, and, and to get the community involved. You know, we'd love to see more people. We're, we're always looking for people to come join us as part of the club, but we're also looking for people who can be, who, who maybe they don't have the time, but are willing to help us support these, these organizations. And over the years, this community has been very, very generous. Right. Well, we do meet on Fridays at noon and right here locally at the Elks Club. Yeah. Um, our members come together, we have lunch, we have program, and truly Kiwanis is a service organization and I know we have other organizations in the community. The reason I'm saying it's very touching, especially folks, members that we have now, who benefited when they were young. And it was Kiwanis, I remember a story saying, uh, we didn't have much and or we have a member who said, I, our family didn't have much, and he was part of K-Kids, and then went into the Builders and Circle K. So he was 
immersed in learning what Kiwanis and service and giving and volunteerism was throughout from elementary and high school. And when he became an adult, he joined what we call it the big boys yeah. club, <laughs> which nowadays we have a lot of women in our club, but it's the big club, which is the adults, the members who are professionals that we meet once a week. Hopefully most of us come in once a week, but we're always there to give, even if we don't come every right. week. And yet you are so wonderful in doing this because you segue from your retirement and your passion back into the kids and Kiwanis, which your passion is flying. And, I, <laughs> and instead of driving, you fly to a lot of places, um, which is another time we'll talk about Carl. Hopefully you will grace me with another time and we'll talk about other things because I truly want to talk to you about. But today, our intention is the duck race. That's right. Right? And we have lots of ducks that need to be adopted. <laughs> we do. Um, so I'm going to put the link right after our, uh, in our YouTube, the information, but the duckies need to be adopted. So if you go to... Um, info. you can click on the duck race, or, the you, duck can go, race, or you can go to ducksforkids.org. Ducksforkids.org, Glendale, right? And then it's team 313607, which is my team, <laughs> and find my name. And I'm going to put the link over there because I want you to adopt and help my team be the winner. But... We've got what? It's going to happen at... May 4th. May 4th. Verdugo Park. Verdugo Park, right here in Glendale. And there's going to be thousands of kids. We're going to have vendors. Yes, we'll have vendors. We'll have sponsors. We'll have sponsors, you're, you're, you're vendors. Gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna watch Verdugo Park. Because there isn't, there isn't a lake in Verdugo Park. But by 11 o'clock in the morning, there will be two lakes, an upper lake and a lower lake built in Verdugo Park for somewhere in the ballpark of 20,000 rubber ducks rubber to ducks. race through the park. And oh, by the way, if you adopt a duck, you have the chance to win $10,000. That is the grand prize, because this is our primary fundraiser. Right. And these ducks that you can adopt, they're $5 each. <laughs> or you or you can buy a, you, you can buy a, a backpack for, for five, for $25, and that gets you into a drawing for an extra $500, exactly. a chance of an extra $500. So there's a little bit of chance to do that. But all the money that comes from this duck race supports the organizations that we're talking about. It supports scholarships. It supports kids. It supports early learning. Right. It supports reading is fundamental. Uh, it supports you know uh, leadership groups in 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 schools. It supports Ascensia. It supports the Salvation Army. It it is part of what helps people who need an extra hand in our community. That's what does it. Right. And so you, you know, and you know what. This is a great event just to bring the kids to. I know. It's like it's so much you know, fun. Kids and rubber ducks. I mean, just to watch their eyes get really big as all these ducks go from an upper lake to a lower lake. And the event will run from 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, next running down to next to it to <laughs> see where that duck is going. And, you know, they're, you know, because there's 20,000 ducks, we don't do it just once. You know, right. we'll run several heats. So between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., you know, the final race will be just before 2 p.m. Uh, that'll determine where the where the winner is, but but kind of like a track meet, we run heats, and the winners of each heat, you know, get set in a separate area, right. and then we do the final race. But just gathering all those, it's so much it's, fun. It's just a, it's just a lot of fun, and just to watch the 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 smiles on the kids' faces and the looks of amazement and the enjoyment. Or take pictures yeah. of the men with taking <laughs> off their feet and going in Cause, there. Because somebody's got to launch the ducks down. <laughs> it's it's just a. Uh, and we have the police department and the fire, fire department. The police department's there, the fire department's there. They said, uh, With their hose. They, yep, yep. The fire, they said, can't do this without the support of Wendell Fire because, you know, we, 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 we use water, we send them down, and we pump the water back up to the top lake, and we recycle it, and, right. and, we, and, we, and we do it again. But as I said, it's, you know, just to watch the smiles on the kids' faces, they just have a lot of fun watching that. So, you know, if you have kids and, you know, May 4th, it's a Saturday, so the first race starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, feel free to bring your kids out. Uh, yes, one of our one of our affiliated Kiwanis clubs out uh, 
we'll we'll be cooking burgers and hot dogs. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's I, haven't seen a the, I haven't seen the final menu, but there will be some food and, and water out there. You know, it's just a, a good way to spend a few hours with uh, with your exactly. kids and just have fun. Exactly. And, and as I said, and if you find your way to buying a duck or five or ten or hot dogs, you know, help me, please. <laughs> It's like I'm on a competing team. I should be, but it's but it's said the the thing that I always I tell people is competition should be good nature. Yes. And realize that all this funding goes back into our community. Exactly. It all goes back. Our our sponsors have been very generous, so everything coming from, uh, from from this race will be reinvested in our community. And you know, amazingly, this is our nineteenth year. Nineteenth year. Our nineteenth year, and so over the nineteen years, we've invested, we've reinvested one point four million dollars. Back into, back, into our, the in, back into Glendale. So, you, you know, that's the generosity of this community. That's the hard work of the Kiwanis Club. That's the generosity of the people who are viewing viewing this. And so, you know, as I said, I, I would invite you to adopt some ducks. Yes. Uh, you know, it's your chance to win $10,000. We have a couple of $1,000 prizes in there also. Um, but, it, you know, by having some fun and having that chance, you also have a, you have an opportunity to not only win some money, but do some good with, uh, with, the, with having fun. And please come on out and see us on that day. It's great to have, uh, have, have kids. Exactly. And even, and even big, I'll say kids, you know, the little kids and the big kids. And the big kids. Uh, come We're going to have a big duck Yeah, we'll have, we'll, have a, we'll have some big blow up ducks and yeah. we should have a duck walking around and, uh, is setting all the other ducks. It's like, come on out and, and, and enjoy enjoy a couple of hours with us. Right. And, and get to know us. It's not only about money. It's what the money does. It brings smile and it brings joy and it helps maybe one person, maybe a group, maybe a family. We never know who is the beneficiary of your one dollar or your five dollars. And this ducky has been a part of my card. This is my second card. Then my ducky, it's already got a lot of sun. But people who say, what is that duck in your car? Because it's always in the back window and everybody gets to see that. And I've had kids say, hi, passing by. That's what we do. We bring smiles to your face and your children's face. So with that, I want to say Hail Kiwanis. <laughs> Hail, 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 Hail Kiwanis. It's right. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization with some really, really good, with, people. really good people with good hearts who really care. And, you know, just like the people who are, who are watch, watching this, you, you know, people have good hearts. And so that, that's, that's Glendale. You know, people have good hearts. That's what makes us. And uh, we invite you community. to join us, not only at the park, but also. Uh, call me, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to give you an application. With that, I want to say thank you so much uh, for being here, being part of the community, and giving back to the community with heart and soul. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's always yes. wonderful to see you. And with that, thank you for being part of the Real Talk Tuesdays. It's not always about healing. It's about giving. See you next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.